Welcome to this NLD referee training session on refereeing the scrum presented by Mike Mulroy, a society training officer. So scrum is a way of restarting the game following a minor infringement or a stoppage in play, otherwise known as a way for the big lads to show that they're stronger. Now, over the years, the scrum has been changed quite dramatically in terms of the way that we have the engagement sequence uh, and the dynamics of the scrum and overall we are now trying to see a trend brought back to uh, to allow that competition again so it's quite important that we get ourselves prepared properly so the first thing is we're going to talk to the front rows and this is incumbent upon every referee and it's something that we all must do so things that we might want to cover in that to pre-match brief with the front rows is where we're going to set, maintain the weight and balance, each person's responsibility, what sequence we should follow, where we need the binding to be, and what's going to happen sometimes in the case of rewarding uh, positive legal dominance. So an example of that might well be uh, getting in front of a front row and saying to them, OK, hooker, there's the mark on the scrum. I want you to go left of that. That way we're going to go into the gaps and not head on head. I want you to control the weight, stability and balance all the way through my crouch, bind and set. I won't move on until I'm happy on each side. Look at then the tight head, identify the tight head, make that eye contact. I want feet, hips and shoulders, always pointing straight down the line, nowhere else. Again, identify and make eye contact with the loose head, hips engaged with your hooker all the time. Nice long bind with the neutral elbow. Guys, if you are going forward, uh, I want you to maintain a legal dominance, otherwise I won't reward you. If you follow people in, change your shape, I'll play away or we will reset. And that's always a good, good thing to have in, in the bank as well with your nines, is if it starts to go wrong uh, and it's been held at eight feet, words to use, nine, use it or reset. And quite often they will want to go. So when it comes to actually setting the scrum, the first thing we're going to do is make the mark on the pitch. We're gonna make sure that those hookers are offset from there. So as we said in the brief, going left slightly to ensure that we are going head in gaps and not head on head. And that there's a clear gap between those shoulders that can be maintained because of their position, their weight and the size of the gap. Then we start our sequence, and the first point being crouch. First of all, we want uh, no head on head. If there is, then stop it and deal with it straight away. Let's set an early high standard, and then we don't need to work too hard afterwards. Make sure it's that clear gap, as in the photo there, that can be maintained, and that the packs are at the same height so that they can push. Make sure that uh, we've got the shoulders engaged, particularly we will be looking around the loose heads more than anything else, they have a tendency to tuck this shoulder in here and we want that to, to be maintained so that we've got square shoulders across the front. Make sure that the number eights are engaged or at least preparing to engage before or on your crouch so that we don't get any slingshotting. Now, so then we come on to actually looking at the bind and for, there's a few things here. First of all, the only people that really should be moving are the props. They move their arms to get a bind on the shirt and they should be pushing each other away. And that's always a good little uh, tip is if you get this slightly early engage that you want to manage, you might want to say before a scrum, OK, guys, on my bind, you need to push each other away, not pull each other on. Wait for the set. Make sure that that gap is maintained and that those shoulders are still exposed across the front row. This is then where that big scan comes in again. And it's useful sometimes to take a step back or stand up straight and have that big holistic scan. Maybe like you would do when you're driving, we go from mirrors, screen, dashboard, mirrors. And refereeing is no different in this situation. So we're going to start by looking at the position of the tight head's feet. Are they in a position to push? Are they too far back? Are they sticking out? Look, working up his legs to his hips, are his hips pointing straight down the line as per the briefing? Then we're going to come across his back. Is it fairly flat or angling very slightly upwards? 
Um, with that, we can take into account the loose head binding as well. We look at the tight head shoulders and the cross his arm to his bind. And we look at the loose head shoulders. Are they uh, the same height? Is his uh, outside shoulder a lot lower, for example? What are the angles? Working along his back as well to his hips. Are they engaged with his hooker? Has he already stepped out? Work down the legs and then down to the feet. And that will give you an indication of where and which direction these people will be pushing in based upon the body positions. And when we can keep that scan going and we don't get too focused just on one or two things, we'll be able to see cause rather than effect. And that's a real key skill for any referee. So when we look at the set, first of all, we're going to make sure that heads are engaged, uh, that the number eight is in position and uh, I'm properly bound and we know which lane they're in between the flanker and the second row or between the two second rows we're going to make sure that the whole thing is stable now if we look at that picture there clearly there are some angle issues clearly there are some binding issues um, that are not conducive to it staying up but they are conducive to blokes having a go and proving that they are bigger and harder than the other one and this is where, as a referee, we want to take that nice, big, holistic approach and say, OK, I have identified where the issue is here or potential issue, but I'm going to let it play out and see. Because despite those angles and despite those bindings, when that ball comes in, things may change slightly. And with a little bit of pressure from each side, it may all just work and we get the ball in and get it away. And really and truly, that's what we have, want to happen. So let's not get too eager to set everything up perfectly, but let's get very eager to know where the potential issues are going to be. And then, of course, we want to look at anybody who is uh, taking that early drive, who's chasing their feet on the set. Uh, and equally, we need to look at those that might be taking a step off quite deliberately in order to buy the, the free kick or the penalty. So now we're going to have a look at putting that sequence into perspective. And this is a clip from the Rugby World Cup between Australia and Wales. Uh, I want you to have a look through this. The video pauses a couple of times for you to uh, see some of the points uh, in a little bit more detail. And what you're going to see is those head on the shoulders, some preloading, the hooker almost popping out and the red loose head angle. So have a look now. So there we can see we're already head on shoulders and there's a fair bit of weight going through that already. Again, even more, that's proper preloading. And if you look now at the red uh, hooker, he is quite high up in, the, in his shoulders as well. And now look at the red, how he steps left under pressure. So those are the things as a referee that we need to be uh, aware of and we need to be able to manage. Now, um, you may hear that on the rugby field, people um, often say, don't pass rubbish ball, or as the title shows there. Now, we have uh, a saying within rugby as well. Why would we allow the ball to come in when it looks like that? And that scrum, believe it or not, is still just up in the air. So as a referee, I don't want to create more problems for myself so i wouldn't want the ball to come i'd want to reset that as well so be strong as a referee have a good look around you analyze what's going on use that big scan and decide what you need to do next whether it's appropriate to uh, play through as we've talked about or whether the best approach is actually to uh, to reset that or even if after a few resets we're just going to penalize so here's another couple of international um, scrums. I want you to have a look at the loose head angle because for years we have um, penalised or gone, gone after the tight head. Uh, and because of that, the tight head has very often cleaned up their game. 
uh, and the loose head knowing that we're going to look at the tight head will often do the the wrong thing to try and disrupt the scrum so if you have a look here um, we're going to show you three slides uh, overhead pictures of how this sequence develops so first of all his inside shoulder is tucked underneath the uh, the hooker that means they're never going to go square with any pressure plus also it means that he can drive underneath the hooker and into between the prop and the hooker of the opposition his hips are already disengaged from his hooker and his feet are out and not only that but the flanker is pretty much on the same angle if you've got a flanker who's working hard to get somebody back into position, you'll see a hinge motion uh, around where that shoulder connects to the hips. And that's because the flank is working hard to keep the hips in here. He's working hard to just get him back into the angle that the hooker, uh, sorry, the loose head wants to go in. So here's the next photograph um, uh, as part of the sequence, just ready for the ball to come in. Now, look even at the one uh, for gold, he's starting to angle in, um, but worst of all, we've now got uh, gaps forming in the front row. The hooker for, um, uh, for Argentina is now isolated and he has come away from his tight head. Um, that makes it really difficult for the Argentinian front row to maintain any shape or strength. But it also means that the opposition tight head, the gold number three in this case, struggles to maintain his shape. And if you have a look there, we've got hips that are pointing slightly one way now because he's trying to correct with his shoulder and hips to maintain that straightforward momentum. So he's working really hard with core strength in this case. The next part. Uh, just as the ball comes in and the nine goes away, is that one and two for uh, for Argentina drive straight in on the angle. They um, uh, the, there's absolutely nowhere for for them to go. The second row have to go with them at all. The only one who from Argentina who's looking like they're driving straight in in any shape or form is the is the tight head. But now, again, under all that pressure, regardless of the work is done, the gold tight head cannot uh, control the weight anymore uh, and has to fold in. Now, this is often incorrectly penalised by referees who think it's the tight head who is stepping out uh, and driving across into the hooker. So when, therefore, we're penalising the effect rather than the cause uh, and it's really important that we we get that and get onto it quickly that look at what started it and penalize that now we're going to look at a sequence of eight scrums in a recent national two game uh, between chester in red and loughborough students in white um, we're going to show them to you as they happen in the game. Uh, apologies for showing all of them, but it helps to show the pattern that's building up and indeed that cause and effect. There are three pauses in this video uh, that we'll look at things in and then we'll summarise them afterwards. And now look at the white loose head there he's taken an angle pulled his arm down as well <laughs> So 
so look already the loose head has completely lost shape his head and his shoulders are below his hips and his left ha uh, leg <laughs> is out. he goes down to the <laughs> But that was always happening throughout the whole scrum. So the loose head here is always the problem. Uh, as I say, the referee asks the far side for info and the secondary set is just some poor binding on that far side. But that didn't cause the scrum to go down. The left, uh, the, sorry, the loose head sets badly on the angle. His feet are always out. He cannot maintain any core structure and he must then angle in. He has no alternative. OK, so this is the next scrum of the game. And what we want you to do now in this situation is to scan the scrum as though you're the referee. So on this side, remember, we're going to start with the tight head. We're going to look up their feet, legs, hips, back over to the loose head, down from his shoulders, back, hips, legs and feet. Um, and then I want you to ask yourself, is there any issue on the setup here? So what was the issue there? The loot it's clearly going down in the front row. What's the issue? I want you to pause the video a few things that you think created that problem and then press play and we'll move on to the the next scrum so that was the second scrum so did you get that well, hopefully one of the first things you saw was that the loose head's feet are always out of, uh, of line with his hips. So he's always trying to push back inside. He sets up really badly. He, he doesn't have any core strength and he's not a particularly strong chap. Um, then he takes a short bind, which is really poor technique for any loose head if they're not very, very strong. His head and shoulders go below his hips because he extends that left outside leg more than anything else. That puts his hips off balance. Once his hips are off balance, he's got no core strength to maintain it or to pull it back in. The only thing he can do is to try and drive straight. And by doing that, his, his shoulders now have to come round, which means that he's always going in towards the hooker. He's also getting too low. Um, once he does that and his back is arched, he can do nothing other than collapse under, under the weight. So now we're going to have a look at scrum number three. And I want you to again do your setup scan, please. As though you were on this side, the camera side of the of the scrum. <laughs> So there already, look, you can see the angle of his leg and his hips as well. He's now got no option because there was nothing straight for the three to lean or push against because the guy is always setting initially on a really poor angle. That means there is no strength and he would have to have his hips and his his shoulders. <laughs> Look again at his legs now. His back's almost perfect. He straightens his leg. That means he folds his back completely. So 
So the referee actually calls for uh, an AR input. So bearing in mind, I know this is only the third scrum and we do have ARs here, but we've penalized the first two scrums for the loose head. Now, I would suggest certainly if you were on your own in the game, you're going to want to stand on that loose head side and try and manage him as much as you can. Uh, admittedly, in this game, there are assistant referees. But the reason that you're going to stand there is because you need to work hard, you need to see it, you need to get your scan going, because the loose head is, uh, is always the problem. In these, in these scrums with these two teams, and you need to make sure that you're there to see what's happening, see the cause, so that you can penalise it where necessary. And very, very clearly, there's not much management that you can do in this case. It is really a question of penalising. So again, another uh, another scrum now, um, this time only about uh, eight to 10 metres out from the white try line. White one is now on a warning. So after scrum three, he's put on a warning um, that uh, the next time he's going to the bin. What's clearing up this one there? Let's go, good Let's go. 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 Let's go
you can see the weight coming across from our right there across to the left and you can see how white one is uh, lower in his head and his shoulders than his hips he's always driving in down and across which is why the red three looks like he's slightly lower because he's being pulled down as the white one drives in so this is uh, scrum number five Inside, on the line. On the line, inside. Crouch and so whilst this has uh, just gone across and down over the mark and it's a good one that we would reset rather than do anything with just bear in mind the patterns that we've had already the loose head angle always is the cause of the sideways movement it never stay is stable it never sets still at all perhaps we could take a little bit longer between uh the, the bind and the set to see where the the pictures and the issues are and again good technique for you know, us as referees is if we're not sure or we need a bigger scan then just pause more between each part of the sequence so the pressure from this side going across is what causes the far side to uh, to go to ground so this is the reset from that scrum i'm new to this what's up please patience before the hit comes in Patience, crouch, and see, see, set. So difficult to see, perhaps, but look at the left loose head's feet already. Knees are really far forward. Feet are already out. <laughs> So just behind the nine, you can see that body angle is already at least 45, 50 degrees. Look at his arm and his shoulder. He can only drive across. The, the red front row actually try and pull this back again. So again, this is a good one to to actually say that we're going to play away from, but the cause again is the loose head angle going across the scrub. And as I said, the red front row works really hard there to stay square and to try and keep it going. Uh, again, because what they don't want is for it just to collapse and the referee to have a 50-50. They want to drive forwards. They want to drive square so that they're rewarded with legal dominance. So sixth scrum of the game then. Uh, again, look at this from the ref's view to begin with. Um, do your scan uh, as we normally do, going across from tight head to... Brandon, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go boys, let's get set. Yeah, let's get let's get let's come on, hold it in, boys. Stay square, don't go. Yeah, let's go, boys. Big tools, so let's see. 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 Let's
So you see now the loose head is already starting to angle. So he's now dipped his right shoulder. Oh, come out. He steps out to the to the left, as does he, so that they start to bind and push across. He can't go straight. He keeps stepping out. Go across. There's no strength in their front row at all. And the referee penalises the loose head for red for going out and around. So the loose head sets really badly. We are, what, 15 metres in from the sideline with the assistant referee in line. The feet and the legs point out straight away, right on that bind. He takes a step out. He can't push straight because of that. He takes another step out as well. He has absolutely no option but to drive across the front of the scrum. Was the referee right? So we're now going to look at the seventh scrum of the game uh, and we're now just into the second half. We need to have a look at a game from the view of the, the camera. So they're really, really low, really far back. And if you look at the eights and the flankers. So in this case, because they set really low with their feet far back, they're unable to maintain their balance. And they end up chasing, trying to maintain their weight against the, the weight of the pack, which is in front of them. That's what creates the early push. The tight head on this side, actually, number 17, seems quite good. He's quite stable and strong. Uh, the only issue is his feet are too far back and they're getting too low. So if you're lower than the opposition uh, and you send your feet too far back, you'll never be able to hold their weight as it's coming forwards and down at the same time. Uh, and that's just part of dynamics. So now we're on to scrum number eight. So as we said, on this side of the scrum, it's quite strong. It's not perfect, but we, we take that test and allow them to, to scrummage and they managed it quite well. 17 for white uh, gets in quite a good position, just a little bit too long and a little bit too low. Uh, so that's a good competition that we're going to let to play out. It then suddenly loses shape and folds in uh, and the referee quite rightly uh, finally gives a yellow card against the uh, white loose head. So look at the facts first of all, what's actually happening? And the way to determine that is to follow your scan. Slow down your sequence between each of the, of the parts Try to manage the issue that you identify. It also helps to keep it in your mind if uh, you know you've identified it and they know that you're looking for it too. If you need to, then penalise. Don't be afraid of penalising. It's not your fault. Escalate the sanction uh, if necessary, if it is um, uh, something that's going to be repeated as it was in this case. 
the right time to get rid of the loose head in this case was scrum three or four. So what we're going to do now is have a look at Loughborough again, I'm afraid. Loughborough this time are in purple and it's Hinkley in the gold and black hoops. Now, what we want to do is look at a slow engagement sometimes, a slow sequence. So I need to want you to ask yourself, is this scrum stable? Balance and pa patience, okay, balance and patience. Yeah, thank you, that'll do, that'll do. Adam, go, go, fucking go! Shoulders, crouch, seat, bind, set. So ask yourself, do I need to take a bit more time between the phases? Um, and let it settle before moving on. Now, this was never rushed. That sequence was not rushed at all, but it was never settled. So perhaps a crouch, make sure they're all nice and still. A bind, because they were all then chasing feet and getting into a position before we move on the set. And it, it's simple. You just turn around to them and say, guys, I am not going to move on until we are still. That's up to you now to manage that and fix that I'll only move on when we're ready so let's look at uh, we talked about being in the position to push before so when we talk about a position to push we need to have a look at a few things so watch this video here Who's ripping it? Who's he? Here we go. Come on. Let's get on the side of the scrum for me, please. Now let's go. Yeah, some respect. Yeah. Front. Yes. Stay square tight, Edward. Stay square tight. Good balance on the last. Now we crouch. Let's go, Dan. Let's go, boy. Bind. Let's go, grip. Let's go, bite. Bind. Set. So you see there how they have dipped. So you saw the knees coming right down to the ground because they want to get the dip in. Right, Dan! <laughs> so, whilst it looks... Time off, please. Uh, Captain. Uh, we've got three penalties at scrum time now. Two against your tight head and one against the loose head. I need to see. What, what, what community detail? What are they for? Yeah, uh, they're just collapsing, OK. Uh, head needs to stay above hips. So he talks about head above hips easy way to get yourself out of trouble here rather than saying you uh, you need to do this they need to be in a position that they can maintain the weight and then their feet need to be in a position where they can push so the tight end set tight head sets with a really long body it's not terribly bad technique at all and did you see that little dip they dip and arch the backs because they want to then take the, the nudge with the, by extending their legs. It's very, very good, clever tactics, and they're very, very well coached team. The problem is none of them, being students, are big enough and heavy enough, really, when they come up against a big pack. So they all arch and dip, and that just meant that because they got too low, that the, the hinkly weight then came on top of their shoulders instead of pushing against the shoulders. So they were too low to support their own weight and the weight of the uh, the Hinkley pack. And therefore, the collapse is caused by, by Loughborough. So have a look at this one then. Uh, the referee talks about being able to push, which is really good language. Never mind that, yeah, it's just collapsing your, uh, your uh, head above your hips, like he said in the last one. Your feet need to be in a position where you can maintain your weight and balance and in a position to push. Why do we need that? Yeah, come up a little bit, thank you. That's better. Oh, yeah. Need a minute, AJ. <laughs> Keep working on that gap. Yeah. Yes! Yes! Yeah, two Ouch! On. On. Hold, hold. Ah. Yes! Bind! 
Bitch. So look how they're moving their feet back now. Set. And their knees, where if you can compare them to so they all bend their knees right to the ground to get as low as they can to get a little nudge and upwards drive. Sustain that balance and the weight. Three to ground. So moving the legs back is a very clear coaching point. They all do it uh, as a pack. So it's clear that they're being taught that. Their bodies are very, very long, but they are lower than the opposition, which means they can't support that weight, not of them, uh, themselves or the weight of the, the other pack, which is now slightly higher. Starts at a good height, but because of that dip, they come lower. So where does that leave us as referees? First of all, a few little techniques. Slow down, slow down the sequence, make sure it's balanced and that they are in a position that they can maintain and that they're in a position that they can use to push from. Make sure that we scan at every opportunity and that's not just across the front rows, but we're looking a little bit further away. Turn your head, make sure people know you're there. Check their shoulders, check the angles of the bodies, check the legs and the feet, and then look at the binds and the elbows. A good technique is to stand further away to see the whole picture. So again, we must look at cause and effect. Ask yourself what has started the issue and either manage it or deal with it. Now, in terms of further training, there will be some further videos that will uh, come out to you or that you'll be able to see on uh, on our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, just go to uh, YouTube and search NLD Ref Training. And we will also uh, put a link somewhere on one of those videos uh, so that you can go to some questions based upon those uh, those videos. So have a look out for those in the next few weeks uh, and have a look for the question sheet. Just remember that um, uh, it's, it's of no benefit if we don't get those questions back and uh, this is all there for your benefit. So please do fill those in uh, and then we can talk about them. Uh, afterwards. So please make sure that you complete those, send them back into us and we can review them with you. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for those who took part on the night and did some excellent uh, practice outside as well. And we look forward to seeing you next time.